3,595 pounds as you see it here today. A 16 BHS Black Label Series Wolf Pup here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This RV that we're looking at is has a lot of upgrades uh, above and beyond the standard package. Naturally, it'll run a couple bucks more and it will definitely weigh a couple pounds more as a result. Specifically, the Black Label package and the rear cargo rack adding some weight to them. But this has been popular. The features that you get uh, and, and the value that you get out of them has been absolutely class leading. These have become a breakout star here at Halo RV where we carry six, 700 sometimes different campers. Um, we may have a standard series in stock. We may have a black label in stock. They may be equipped differently as fast as these go. Sometimes we can't get our preferred build. We have to tell them just get me anything you can as soon as you can until you can build more of our preferred stuff. So give us a call. Always make sure we have the one in stock you're looking for. So one of the uh, available options on pretty much any Cherokee towable RV is the Juice Pack Solar option. And it's a 50 watt high efficiency raised roof panel, um, a of course appropriately sized charge controller, battery disconnect switch, group 27 battery end box, and then this voltage monitor, which tells us exactly how much juice is currently remaining available on the battery um, and it live updates. So I guess you click lights on and off or use things that will update. Now you saw right there it was reading 12.5 volts. Um, it's been sitting there. Like the first thing I do when we get these in, I come in, I turn on all the lights. That 12 volt fridge is currently operational. We are not plugged in. We are running off this, uh, you know, juice pack battery and roof solar package. So one of the things I'm curious about, we're going to do a little experiment so you can see how well it does work. Because, you know, it's solar something a lot of people don't know about is after we're done with my whole video, we're going to come back in and take a look at this thing and see what it's reading then. Just to give you a frame of reference here, we're going to start from that entry door and work our way around. Let's do counterclockwise today, just because. Um, you can see how above the bed there and kind of across from the dinette where I've, uh, you know, I'm sitting currently would be our TV hookup. So should you be inclined, perfect little spot to add a TV. And there's a matching bracket outside where that TV can float. Now you'll see uh, cross breeze windows all the way across our front bed here. This is a camp queen right now uh, where it's a, uh, a 60 inch wide and uh, what 74 inch long bed. However, you do have the ability to uh, make this a true queen bed with a very slight modification that won't really muck up any of your resale or anything like that. There's a little headboard shelf right here. Um, it's kind of there as a bit of filler space. Now, the mattress that they're using is bigger than it used to be, so there is actually a little storage pocket here. So you have, in a sense, of kind of a little hidden, out of sight, out of mind storage area. But you could use this shelf for phone chargers, CPAPs. You've got USB plugs on this Furion Lit Portable Bluetooth speaker mount. Speaker not included. It is something that's available. If you want to learn more about those, would you believe we've done a video on it? Um, also, right above here, before I forget, there is the prep plug for the LCI One Control little Wi-Fi adapter that is a completely separate thing you can tack onto these. Very easy to plug into. But, what I was getting at, if you don't care about that headboard, if you're tall like me, you want the longer bed, you could actually very easily remove that and put in its place a 60 by 80 bed. Now, I, I especially, I, I always like to show storage in campers, but especially the smaller a camper is, the more valuable it is. Starting up top there, if we take a look, you can see you got those dual swing open cabinets, but the bed itself is on dual gas struts. It lifts right up and makes for easy access storage below. So they've really given us all the storage space they can. Now those pillows obviously don't have to go against the front wall. I've kind of got them just in like lounge mode currently. But uh, I, I just kind of wanted them out of the way so you could see the uh, headboard over here. As we flip our way around past that little Wi-Fi prep plug, again, another big overhead cabinet space. We already took a very brief look at the uh, um, battery monitor readout, which is still holding at 12.5 volts like we started. Um, down below that is our uh, Furion Entertainment System. Right now, in its current state, it's Bluetooth and it's stereo. However... You can sync your phone to it. It's got a power uh, USB plug and an HDMI plug for entertainment expansion. All kinds of cool things there. And then as we work our way down further, we got our little family dinette. This is really kind of sized for like two adults. Ooh, that window is really killing us, isn't it? It's sized for two adults, maybe an adult and a little on either side or a couple littles there. Um, what's also nice though, uh, like I, I was kind of talking about how the, uh, the, the window here is not really camera friendly when we point right at it. 
Um, that also means that if it's a hot day, the sun is going to billow in here and, and really increase the heat in the RV. Good news is, they kind of gave us a way around that. Because all these windows have nice pleated shades, which obviously you can see the improvement in the visual quality on our video so far because it's not trying to fight inside-outside light pollution. It really blocks a ton of sunshine, which means it will also prevent a lot of heat from getting into the RV. Combine that with the full-size, full-power 13,500 BTU air unit up top here. And folks, you're going to be very comfortable even in hotter southern, southwestern, southeastern kind of climates. Now, our dinette, as you can see, like most dinettes, folds down into a little sleeper. This is, it's, it, it's what gives this camper a total sleeping capacity of five, but... It is definitely more fit for a kid or perhaps a big dog. And never a brand a waste an opportunity for storage. You can see that below both benches, you've got max storage space. Those are good for like extra bedding or beach towels, some stuff you don't use maybe every day. We are carpetless. We are easy cleaning, ventless flooring. And something else that's kind of cool over here, a very recent addition is that we're getting thicker bunk mattresses here in these uh, uh, Black Label Wolf Pups. Kind of like, well, it's really the exact same uh, bunk mattress Rockwood's using, so it's cool to see them step up like that and improve, you know, kid comfort as well. And if the kids are more comfortable, you're they're going to sleep better and you're going to have a better day tomorrow. Also, USB plugs and individual click lights up here for those kiddos. As we uh, swing around here uh, into the kitchen space, there's some really cool things to, to look at. Wolf Pup was the first in the small camper class to standardize the use of those big 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor driven refrigerators. So this thing has immense cold storage capacity plus an extra fridge outside we haven't even seen yet. Also, um, <clears throat> real quick, a black label set of features. You see the solid surface counter here in the kitchen as well as a high-rise kind of spring-loaded sprayer type faucet. I do want to point out though that in any uh, standard series Wolf Pup, other, uh, you would normally have the sealed edge press membrane kitchen counters uh, through the entire RV. But in uh, a Black Label series, you're getting sealed edge membranes in uh, the uh, dining table right here and then solid surface in the kitchen. What's kind of nice though, like you can see how it's all put away, it's nice and clean. With the, the sink covers and the stove cover, you've actually got good prep space in the little trailer. But this thing has some pretty decent kitchen storage capacity, despite its little size. Starting with that, that again, that bigger fridge, it's like almost, I think it's over 70% bigger than it used to be when it was just a 6 cubic foot gas electric here. And it's completely traveling friendly, being 12 volt. Um, up top, you know, big overhead cabinet space, nice for your cereal boxes or pictures for your iced tea. Over here, we got our control panel. Um, Wolf Pups used to just have little switches, click, click, click here and there, and they kind of condensed everything into a control panel. And when they did that, they also incorporated an invisible version of the LCI-1 control system. So if you want to be able to operate things like your awning lights, uh, or your awning itself, you can do all that if you choose to get the app and sync it to your phone. As we come down below, you see a beautiful big stainless sink right there. Um, those sink covers can actually quickly slide over and when used in conjunction with the folding tempered glass top on the stove, create like a nice little back and side splash, which is kind of handy, kind of cool. And I like the, the very small profile of that stove top, those two burners, because it always leaves a, at least a decent chunk of counter space over here. It's not as much as a giant rear kitchen fifth wheel, of course, but it's a little trailer and they do the best that they can. The little red switch that you're seeing down there next to the converter, which if you're not familiar with what that is, that would be like what you call your fuse box at your house. That is a battery disconnect switch that comes with the optional juice pack solar uh, package. So kind of keep that in mind that on a more standard series we may or may not have that on these black labels though we do like to include all of the things and i want to address something here that a lot of people don't understand about these bathroom doors people look at it and go well the dummies didn't cut it to the right size no this is completely by intention and there's a reason for it if you want to leave all these windows open to get some airflow and not run the ac you need a fan to pull air in and exhaust air out well the best place to put a fan is in the ceiling because hot air rises so in the bathroom they include whether it's black label or standard the extra large ceiling vent fan up here so you can keep the bathroom door closed keep the vent fan running and always exhaust that hot air and get some good airflow. It's, it's actually a really smart design. And frankly, there is no way to smash a human face up against the ceiling enough to be able to see something. 
I don't know who'd want to be peeking around in here. I don't think this is an area most people want to be peeking, despite popular theory. That's just insecurities. Um, foot flush toilet, which is kind of nice, especially for little kids. You know, if this the little campers like this tend to be first time family camper. Little kids can do their own business and you don't need to help them so much. And a thing, a uh, couple things I want to point out, like when we come in the bathroom, you can see you got nice shower surround paneling, but at a glance, the one thing this bathroom lacks is a sink. So as we spin our way around, baby, right round, you see the shower uh, mount right there, but I've got the shower head down here because this shower basically has a miniature corner sink in it, which I think is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And what it'll do is that water will basically just drain down into your gray tank system, just like normal shower water. So you got one thing doing two things. The shower is the sink. It's very space efficient. You know, another thing I thought about this little bucket for the sink when it is uh, shower time, you can set your soaps and stuff in there. And it, it makes it easy to reach, so you don't have to try to bend over and bang your head and bash your head against everything. And also notice, it's basically a, a shallow, sh well, it's kind of a tall shower pan, but it's just deep enough that if you have to give a little kid a, a quick bath, you absolutely could. And remember when I said we'd come back and take a look at this thing? Well, I'm actually recording, even though you're watching it before the full video is done, I'm recording this after the entire video is complete. Remember how we started out at 12 and a half volts? I had the fridge, all the lights running. I've been doing this for about an hour. We're still sitting at 12 and a half volts. A lot of people go 50 watt solar. That's kind of worthless, isn't it? It actually works really well because it's a good high efficiency, high quality Furion panel. Solar's tricky like that. Something could say 100 watts, but it might not actually provide as much effective juice as this thing. It's 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 a smart feature, guys, especially with that 12 volt fridge. If you want to do any sort of off grid camping, or frankly, if you want it to act like a battery tender and save your batteries from deteriorating uh, from a hard, complete discharge due to phantom parasitic load in the RV, which occurs because, like this stereo, it's, it's off currently, but it doesn't turn off. It goes into standby, low power, not no power mode. The display is going, the power is going. The only way to totally, totally kill that thing. So the battery disconnect switch, and hey, wouldn't you know it, they included one of those two smart, well-equipped features in this little trailer. Back outside, we're going to start at the rear upper corner of the door side of the camper and work our way down. Love the exterior gloss here. We'll talk about that more in a minute, but first, all B8, uh, 16 BHS Wolf Pups here at Halo RV see this outside entertainment hookup. If you choose to add a TV to it, it can float between inside and outside with a shared bracket system, and there's your speakers. Now you can turn the speakers inside and outside off separately if you are so inclined. Handy little pet leash latch for Fido or, well, kitty back there, I guess. What Fido and felines? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll work from there. Neat little black label feature, too is when you uh, flip on your exterior lighting, there's this little glow ring around the uh, black label insignia. It doesn't do anything for the camper, but man, it's like a hood ornament on a car. It just looks good. And I really like the addition uh, last year when they added this little outside mini fridge. That plus the fridge inside gives this thing like over 12 cubic foot of cold storage, which that's about as much as a giant fifth wheel, ladies and gentlemen, plus a little drawbridge style door kind of doubles as a little camp table. Pretty darn handy. Um, Cherokees were the first in this class to standardize the stable steps that you're seeing right there. And they are really one of the, the brands that has forced the hands of so many other trailers, even laminated brands who had to later follow suit because Cherokee was doing it, so why couldn't they? You see the bigger handle? That is also an anti-slam door. Now a black label feature uh, will be that uh, larger, almost like off-road style uh, patio light right there. Kind of, uh, now you have lighting under the awning, but this is like an extra spotlight that you can see right above your bedroom window, which is handy. Uh, this thing also has fantastic storage below the bed uh, via this door side access door right here. Let the camera adjust a little bit and boom! You've got a huge amount of space for some big totes and stuff. And where that's handy is if you do decide to get a portable solar panel, wouldn't you know it, they got the plug right there for it. Down below that too, like if you're going to use that to store a grill, there is a gas grill quick neck. So a lot of handy things going on right there. Black Label Series is giving us that beautiful high gloss uh, fiberglass skin right there. Um, 
and uh, it's actually laminated to a, uh, a double layered substrate. And that is uh, effectively what that means is that this RV has like a, a 3 8 plywood sheet of armor wrapped around the sidewalls and, and rear wall, um, which is where a lot of the extra weight on the black label comes from. A lot of people uh, don't realize black label will actually add some weight, a chunk of weight, a couple hundred pounds really, to the camper. Now, uh, just to kind of clarify though, we're not looking at fiberglass up front. All wolf pups, gray wolves, and Cherokees have a 67% thicker 0.04 inch uh, aluminum nose skin on them, which will give the like a really rugged, strong front end on these things. Good for stones, uh, deflecting headwinds, etc. As we work our way down past that stone guard, a couple things up here on the tongue that I really like. Uh, Black Label is giving us a, uh, a solid shell, a hard shell propane cover with the handy little quick access, uh, you know, flap on top and a power tongue jack to do the heavy lifting for us. So, you know, you don't got to get tennis elbow. Now, a neat thing that is found on all of these wolf pups is right up here, even though it's the, uh, our delivery driver didn't utilize it uh, quite this time. It comes with, uh, you know, your pigtail plug buddy right there. Also, a little hook for your safety chain so that that stuff doesn't have to ever dangle down in the dirt in the mud. It's little things like that are handy. Now you might notice that there's a battery and a box on the tongue. That is actually part of the juice pack solar option. Although, please remember, all new RVs sold at Halid RV include things like propane fill and battery and box as required at no additional charge to you. So whether you get a, a Cherokee camper here with the juice pack or not, it's going to have a battery on the tongue when you take it home from Halid RV. Those sleek tinted frameless windows, uh, part of the Black Label package, looking absolutely fantastic. And I know I'm saying the word Black Label a million times out here, but that's because most of the Black Label package actually is expressed on the exterior of the camper, kind of like those beautiful aluminum wheels there. Um, also on those uh, wheels on any Cherokee product, you're going to have little tire pressure indicators on your valve stems so that at a glance, if it's green, you're good to go. If it's red, stop and put air in them. You know, it, it's not a tire pressure monitoring system, but when you're at a travel stop, it's an easy little convenient at a glance thing where you don't have to get down, take a knee, you know, unscrew the valve stem cap, drop it, try to find it, crawl under the camper, get your pants dirty. You just don't got to worry about all that kind of stuff. It's just easier. Something else I really like to point out on these, which is easy to miss, especially if you're a first time buyer, there's things you just don't know to look for, like four corner stabilizer jacks. Folks, do you realize how many little campers have only rear stabilizer jacks? That's an important feature to keep this thing steady. Now, the BHS, the S means storage, not slide. It's got this bunkhouse storage door here, but this handle and lock system is exactly like our main entry door, and you see how it dead bolts right here if needed, and that handle is located below the mattress line, so you don't have to worry about, one, people being able to get in and grab your kid, and two, your kid's sneaking out. They did this right. A lot of brands have that mounted too high. Cherokee's been doing it longer than most. They got it figured out. Now you see that nice 5 8 plywood right there. Cherokee's become a brand that's very good about using good materials. They're also using thicker bunk mats here versus what they'd used in the past. I just kind of clued into that. They used to be using those little thin mattresses. This is the same thing that like Rockwood uses. Wow! These guys are stepping up. Look at that. And if you do need that traveling cargo space, this bunk can obviously fold up out of the way. You see that little eyelet? There's a hook where you can lock it in place. And you can turn this thing into just one big cargo spot. But hey, if you don't need it, shut it down. No worries. Um, all LED tail and marker lights, another thing you'll find on the Black Label series, which is nice. Now, uh, the RV has a fully walkable roof, and you see that cargo rack on the back. That's got about a 200 pound capacity. That's before the spare tire, by the way. Spare tire is another option. The cargo rack is an option. Like I said, we put just about everything we can on this one. So again, keep in mind, the one that we have in stock might be a little bit different, but this is an awesome place to be able to bring some bikes, coolers, um, you could uh, potentially put a small generator on there. Um, plus, you know, we have that uh, potentially optional solar package available on these right here. A lot of good different sort of off-grid functionality things going on here. We've covered quite a bit, folks, and we're happy to do so. All we ask is that when you are ready to make a purchase, whether it's this little guy or one of the big boys right here, give our team here at Halo RV a call and the fair opportunity to earn your business. Big, small, we got them all from economy to excitement. And the only thing we don't do at Halet RV is hidden dealer fees. So give us a call. We'll treat you fair. No nonsense. Just service. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy camping, everyone.